Are you ready, bro? Okay, so I'm from Leapfrog. I'm here with Phil Casper. Uh, Phil, how are you doing, man? Very well, thank you. And yourself, mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Thank it's been a, been a while since um, it's our last company to see you, to be honest. A very long time, yeah. Very long time. Looking, uh, looking very slim. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm back to fighting weight, training weight. Yeah. How I should be. Um, injury free as well, which is a good thing. How long has it been since um, you last stepped in the ring? November 2019. Yeah. See, yeah. I haven't really knew that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, obviously you haven't stopped. So I know you haven't stopped throughout the, the lockdown and all the rest of it. You kept active, you kept busy. Uh, what have you been doing with all the restrictions and stuff to kind of keep yourself fight ready? Uh, I was still training, I was still in the gym. I was still holding pads, I was still working. Um, wasn't very active on social media. I wasn't very active in general. I was just keeping myself to myself really. Um, sticking to the restrictions, doing what I needed to do, um, keeping my head down and grafting on, on a slide, making money, doing what I needed yep. to do. But I am, um, yeah, I was, I was working away. Um, Did you change anything in terms of your training over the last like couple of years? Uh, not, not really changed. I'm just, I had to work around injuries. Yeah. I think that was more probably the main thing that I had to adapt. Um, so I, I adapted working around my injuries, but my injuries have subsided now, so... I mean, because of the clips that I've seen of you, and some of your stories, it just seems like you're a lot, lot stronger than before. I mean, you were strong before, like your shots were very powerful, but you seem a lot faster and there's like a lot more venom in your strikes compared to two or three years ago. So um, it feels like you kind of up that... The strength and conditioning maybe part of Yeah, um, I've added the strength and conditioning back in. I guess I stopped doing it for a while, especially over the lockdown. I wasn't doing it as much. Um, I was doing kettlebells, but that was more for fun and more of a hobby and stuff. I enjoy doing kettlebells and workouts like that. But I guess for this fight camp and for training in general, yeah, uh, strength and conditioning has been levelled up. Um, I've got a new coach now as well, so big shout out to Will. Bang on six uh, for helping me out for this fight camp, especially. But um, yeah, I do feel stronger. I do feel, and I'm fighting at a new weight as well. So. What was the reason why you you changed the weight? Yeah, um, I'm getting older. Cutting weight's not fun anymore. Well, it never is fun, but I'm getting older. Um, my body doesn't want to lose the weight like it used to. Don't get me wrong, this fight camp's gone very well um, in terms of like weight loss and stuff. But yeah, I just. For my own health and for my own, for my own safety. Yeah. Um, I've been killing myself to make super middleweight for all them years, yeah. and it got to a point where it was, it was killing me, and I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. Um, honestly, I was on the brink of retirement because of it. Because I didn't want to do it no more. But I, I got a new fire and a new passion. So nice. yeah, we we switched the game plan slightly, gone up in weight. Yeah. Um, which I think will be much more beneficial for myself. And yeah, we're just, yeah, we're ready to roll. Now. So like well, we've obviously been talking just before we were on camera, and I kind of feel like a different vibe from you, like um, compared to other fights, even the European type of fight. I feel this. Um, no, I don't think intensity is the best way of saying it, but it's like there seems a lot more venom and enjoyment in it as well. If you get what I mean. Uh, well, it seems yeah. like you're at peace, you're enjoying the process as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, it's scary for your opponent. It's good to see from this side, it's yeah. scary for your opponent. Um, I think I've always been known and I think I've crafted a reputation for myself for being very calm, cool, collected. And I've always, and I've had it well documented as well that I want to be a gentleman out of the ring and an absolute C-U-N-T in the ring. And I think I've upheld that from day one till present day. I think as I'm older, I'm more mature. I know what I want. I know where I'm at. I know what I've achieved. I know what I've worked for and what I've obtained on the, along the way. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, I've been working. Yeah. I've been, <laughs> I've been working. Yeah. I've been uh, grafting. I've been putting in the hours. 
and I'm just Sorry, looking, I get it, I get it. I'm I get, looking forward. I get, I get, I get, I get you look, feeling uncomfortable because uh, there's the different and Phil Casper coming to this fight either way. I think um, anyone that knows you knows it, that there's different purpose, there's different kind of ferocity in coming into yeah. this fight. Is potentially that going for that world title fight, which kind of feels like it's been a build up over the last like five, six years, yeah. building up to that world title fight. Is that the one like it's excites you now that's got your juices kind of flowing? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to mention what gave me the fire yet. And there's someone in particular that made that happen and I am forever in it. They, they, don't, they don't even know, that's why I'm not going to say who. But somebody trained with me and gave me the fire again. Excellent. Um, after having them two years off and because of COVID and stuff, I was yeah. injured. I didn't want to get back in the ring and I, and I was done. Um, but someone came to train with us and they they gave me a passion and a, and a desire. Yeah. And I haven't felt like that for a long time. And that reminded me of my very first fight. And my very first fight was on a Sandy Holt show at Interclub. Um, and I remember I finished the fight at four hours drive home to London from Manchester. I was in the car and the adrenaline was buzzing. And that's, that's the closest I felt to that feeling. Um, all the, the achievements and the belts and the wind and stuff prior have been great. Yeah. But I don't know, there's just a different, as you're right, you, you, as you said, there is a different feel. A different, and a different, feel it, yeah, there's yeah. a different vibe. And, um, yeah, I, I guess yeah. I'm, just, I'm just excited. I just, yeah. um, it's good. Nice it's good to see. It's yeah. good to see from this side as well. Yeah. It's good to see. So let's talk about the actual fight that's coming up. So firstly, the location, because it is on your home turf, and bloodline doesn't mess around when you fight in the O2. Like I've been there, the atmosphere has been unreal. Whether it be Scala, whether it be the O2, whether it be even the Round Chapel down the road over here, right? Mm -hmm. It's always sick. So to go for that world title fight in front of like you're pretty much your home fans, you know they're going to sell out that place, right? Mm -hmm. The noise and the atmosphere is going to create, how's that going to feel for you to step out on the O2 to that kind of fan base? Honestly, and then I've always looked at it, maybe the first two or three fights I had at the O2 was like, oh my God, I'm fighting at the O2. My mum used to watch her favourite artist perform on that same stage and now she's watching her son on that stage perform. And I think I was proud of myself making my mum proud. Um, but that, if I'm honest with you, that novelty is worn off. This will be now my 10th fight at the O2. I think I must have the record for most fights on Muay Thai Grand Prix. I'm speculating, but yeah. I'm pretty sure I must have it. Yeah. Um, it will be my 10th fight. I won my European there. Um, and that was always a dream of mine. I think once I had progressed and carried on fighting, yeah. it was always about winning a, a title at the O2 in front of all them thousands yeah. of people, my friends, family, my home fans, everything. And I did that with the European, but that wasn't me in the ring. There, there was a lot going on then. Yeah. That wasn't me outside of the ring. I didn't want to be there. Yeah. I, I can openly say that I didn't want to be in that fight. Yeah. Hence why the performance wasn't my usual performance. But I learned a lot about I mean, myself. Really well I fight, learned really. a lot about myself that day because um, I think one of my coaches, we sat and we had a big conversation about it. On my worst day, I can perform. Yeah. So on my best day, it's a it's a different person. It's a scary it's, person. You see, like what I notice with you is you're like a professional fighter. So when you go into that arena, you have your your process. Just as soon as you switch into your process, it doesn't matter what's happened. Mm -hmm. You just go through your process. Yeah. Even I know the process. When you walk into the thing, you know your back to the ring, and then you walk in, you do a little jump, and do you know what I mean. You go through, it and it feels like it's like. Um, like a, not a chant, but like you know, it's your process to it. Mm -hmm. And once you're in that process, you're running your game. It's, one. It doesn't it, matter. Yeah, the bell That's goes what I switch on. Them. Yeah, a hundred percent. And albeit that I had to switch on and work, that the, the circumstances I just didn't want to be there. Yeah. Um, which told in my performance. But I, however, but is negative. But however, I got my job done. Yeah. So me on my worst can perform and get a job done. Me at my best. So. No, but you say that, you say you got the job done. I watched that fight. It wasn't just got the job done. There was no round that he won. You couldn't turn around. It wasn't like, you know, when you say job done, it implies that, you know, I've just got the win. 
that wasn't the case. You dominated all rounds of those that mm-hmm. fight. I don't think anyone at the end of it was saying, oh, you know what, this is a close one. Everyone in the arena knew you won. So I get what you're saying. You're just beating yourself up for no reason. I, though, but I, I hear you, but the judge gave me a split decision, which didn't make no sense to me. Yeah. But I, again, I'm not, albeit I'm tra- uh, trained as a judge and a referee, but regardless. You got the belt. I got That's the belt, I got the win. It's another scalp. Yeah. Um, but for me, I know I'm better than yeah. I know I perform better than Yeah. Albeit that my fans and my yeah. friends and family were all elated that I'd won yeah. and and I was happy that I made them proud. Me and my coaches weren't happy because that wasn't me, regardless of what I'd achieved. And that that's I think so that's you being the perfectionist as well, isn't it? Exactly. And for me, the people that give their time, their energy, their their love and affection and their, their time and their effort to make me who I am yeah. are the ones that I need to impress, the ones that I need to make happy. Yeah. And if my coaches aren't happy, then I'm not happy. Do you feel this fight is more not about everyone else? Because I think you've paid everything back to everyone else in terms of, like you said, you made your family feel proud, you made your friends feel proud, your coach proud, all of us. So this fight kind of feels to me like it's like your swan story, you know, like this is your fight that you worked for like m- your career basically from working out over there down to the O2, your 10 fights in the O2. And I know like, I've been even pestering for people like Philip to get you that fight and you've got now the world title fight at the O2. It feels like it's more your story that you've got there. This fight kind of means more to you and your kind yeah. of opportunity just to say, you know what, this is me. Like, that's yeah. my best. Yeah, 100%. I, I agree with you. Um, I remember fighting for Contender Cup. That was a very, very long time ago. Um, but that was my first title. And that was like the greatest day of my life. Yeah. And I never thought that there could be anything bigger than that. That, I was just over the moon with that, winning that. Um, and that was like a semi-professional profession because the last bout was C-Club. Yeah. But prior to that, he had Shingo done. But I won that and that, I felt like I'd won a million dollars that day. Yeah. And again, it's the small thing. Yeah. I won a European title, that was great. And in terms of like World Muay Thai, yeah, I've achieved something great there. But yeah. that first win meant more to me. Yeah. And then the winner after that, winning, um, the English title. Yeah. The same day as one of my uh, training partners, uh, Yusuf. Ali was fighting and he won the uh, English K1 and I won the yeah. English Muay Thai. But we all got three stoppage wins. So we had another guy, amateur fighter. Yeah. He stopped his guy, Ali stopped his guy. Next minute I'm warming up, turned around and Ali's coming with a belt. And I'm like, oh, I've got to warm up now. Like, the warm up's done, it's, we got to go. And then I got stoppage as well. So that was stuff. Things like that yeah. is what mean the world to me when it comes to fighting yeah. and training and the whole journey of Muay Thai for me. Yeah. Nights like that. And one of my coaches, he's not here at the moment, uh, he moved abroad, but he always said to me, there'll be great nights. And I remember him saying that as an amateur. Because just if you stick it, keep your head down, focus, you'll always have great nights. Yeah. And, um, but maybe that's a sign of a great fighter, isn't it? Because you know, you get the ones that chase the belts. And the belts don't mean shit, to be honest, right? Yeah. You can have whatever belt you want, but it's that feeling, you know what I mean? It's that feeling that you get. So, for example, in comparison, the world title means is a bigger title than the one that you had over there in the round track, right? I think that was yeah, yeah. Um, means more. But however, that experience, that feeling, where yeah. you were, your journey yeah. was important. Then that matters more 100%. than anything else. Yeah. So let's talk about your opponent. What do you know about your opponent? What do you think he brings to the game? Uh, well, Dan Bonner, last minute replacement. Um, he won the European at that weight class against Marley Grenenberg. I know Marley well. He used to be a, a fighter at a bloodline way before me. But, um, yeah, he's active. He's definitely um, been working. Definitely got some good names on his, on his uh, resume. Um, 
yeah, you just yeah. focus on your own game. Uh, yeah, and and you know what I'm like. I've always been like that. I, I've seen what he's about. I've watched his, his videos. I know what, how he fights. Yeah. Um, I'm a lover of the sport, so I'm I'm very in tune to the sport. So I watch yeah. the shows and I see the fighters and stuff. So I know who's fighting who and yeah. where everybody is in rankings and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. He, he's done well for himself. Um, That, that's all I've really But it's you bringing your game plan to but, the fight. Right, exactly. and, and I learned this very early on. I, you could sit there and watch a million and one yeah. films about a fighter. And then when you turn up on the day, they do the complete opposite of what you've been yeah. studying. So yeah. although you can watch and see somebody's characteristics, yeah. everyone's got a game plan until they get punched in the face. Yeah. And it's very true. Yeah. It's very yeah. true. I remember earlier on, when I was at C-class level, I fought a guy and the guy was relentlessly stopping people with knees. And his last fight was B class, which was the next level up. And I was still a C class fighter. And he lost that fight, but came back down to C class. So in my head, I was like, oh, oh he's a B class fighter. He's more experienced than I am. Knees to the head, it's dangerous and stuff. The guy didn't throw a knee at all. Furthermore, I dropped him and, and then the fight changed. And it was like, right, start focusing on yourself. Yeah and worry less about others. Because yeah. ultimately, they're not helping me. I've yeah. got to help myself and get a job done. Exactly. So yeah, I learned that very yeah. early on. So yeah, I'll watch a, uh, some video, I'll watch some footage, I'll study my opponent, see what they do wrong, see where I can exploit them, and that's it. Yeah. That is it, and, and I don't get focused or sidetracked on what they're bringing to the table. I don't care. Yeah. I'll be honest, I really don't care because I think if you did that, you try changing your fight game and then that ain't gonna work. You can't fight 100%. someone else's style. You have your style and it's worked. You can adapt your style to against whatever opponent. And, and I just... think that is the beauty of it is that I can't ever tell you what I'm gonna do in the next fight because yeah. I could train eight, 12 weeks, one star, turn up on a day and I could be a completely different yeah. person. And I've done it many a time. So no two fights of mine are the same. Yeah, exactly. And I think even that alone is something I'm, I'm south for. I don't fight the same in every fight. I work on things, I improve, I've got better every fight. I've tried to display my improvement. So I'd hate to fight myself and that's not me being cocky. It's just, I don't know what I'm going to turn up with. Yeah. So how do I, how can anybody else plan for it? Yeah. But I mean, if you were look at your opponents, you look at Ivan, the four and Scala, mm. complete different fighter. Then you look at, um, I forget his name now, the tall guy. Sokovic. Yeah, Sokovic. Yeah. Look at Sokovic, I mean, he had a big height advantage over you. And, you know, like when you was walking into that fight, people were saying, oh, you know, how are you going to close him down and stuff? And you managed to address that. I think that's a, like an indication of how you adapt. So regardless of the person in front of you, yeah. you adapt. Yeah. You and adapt, it, adjust, and then go after them. Yeah, and I think that's, that, that's the art of fighting, no? No one in war ever goes in with the same game plan and expects to win every time. It doesn't work like that. Definitely. So, for the O2, what can the fans expect to see from you? The best for Casper. Uh, that's what I'm aiming for. That's the only thing I'm aiming for. Win, lose or draw. Uh, that, I just want to display the best for Casper. The best fighter that you've seen in Phil Casper ever. Uh, Phil Casper 2.0, whatever you want to call it. A new, re reinvented Phil Casper. Yeah. Stronger, faster, fitter, more technical. That, that's the only thing, that, that's the job. I, I think a lot of people get caught up in this, oh, you've got to be the knockout artist or the entertainer. The job is entertainment at the end of the yeah. day. So if I go out there and knock somebody out in the first round, yeah. you just spent big money to come and watch me fight, to go and drop someone yeah. in the first round. I've got people coming from Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, all over the place to come and watch me now. It's a bit unfair for them to just see me yeah. fight once. And it's not like, there's that famous saying, you don't get paid over time. But I don't get paid to but it's leave the fact early. That if, you're, if you're knocking people out in the first 30 seconds, then the question soon comes about who are you fighting? Why are you knocking them out in 30 seconds? Do you know what I mean? That or oh, I was a lucky punch, let's run it again. Exactly. But I think the difference is, and this is more probably why, I, and I've tried to work it out myself, and the only conclusion I've come to is I've never had a rematch with anybody. Yeah. One person's asked me to, to rematch. And it wasn't even a real like call out or request for a rematch. They they just put a comment online. 
but I've never been requested to have a rematch. Yeah. What, why is that? People have retired after the fall or had a couple more and then they've called it a day. And I don't think that's by accident. Yeah. And it's not me being cocky at all, but I think I've earned the respect of people that were way in front of me yeah. for a reason. Yeah. Um, and when I'm in there, I do my job. And I think ultimately, and I said this just a minute ago, the job is to entertain. Yeah. So if I school another grown man, my weight, more experienced than me, because they usually are, because I've not been in the game that, very, that long really, more experience than I have, more fights than I've had, more training experience than I have, and I school you for five rounds, yeah. you can't argue with me. Yeah. There isn't, oh, it was close, or yeah. I could have won, but there, there isn't any of that. I've shut that out. And I think my game plan, ethos, way of thinking when it comes to fights, very different to the, to the standard, the, the norm, the social norm. Yeah. I, I don't take pride in knocking people out. If it happens, it's unfortunate, but rendering another man unconscious yeah. because I've hit them doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. All right, yes, I won the fight in emphatic yeah. fashion, but I don't want to see somebody else injured. At the end of the day, it's a sport. Yeah. But if I can school you, outclass you for five rounds and yeah. dominate another grown man, I think there's more skill in that than knocking somebody out. Yeah, exactly. So I'd rather showcase what I've learned throughout the duration yeah. of my fight camp, put on a display, and show the, 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 the technical ability in the class and, and, the, and the graph that I've been honing yeah. for all them years, yeah. then to entertain the crowd. And then it's a shut up because then you can't come yeah. to me and say, oh, it was lucky you, you, yeah, you, exactly. you did this by accident or you caught me, clipped me with a shot and I'm not into all of that. Yeah. Um, Who do you want to thank? Who do you want to thank? I've got a list, <laughs> just so I don't forget anybody. First off, I want to thank yourself thank you. uh, for coming down and your time. Um, obviously the gym, everyone that comes down to the gym, everyone that supports me, everyone that's there for me. My family, my friends, I love you all. Uh, Tremor, Will Performance, my manner for letting me use their facilities, members of society, uh, QR unit, Medical, phys uh, physio, beat it in zero shots, uh, notorious fight gear, sweet mum's food, TWS clothing, Athlon rub, the mango corner boxing, and Panther and Peak. Yeah, they've, um, most of them people have been with me from the beginning. Um, and just the opportunity that they've allowed me to have given to me be it a piece of advice, a bit of clothing, clinch mob as well. They've just recently given me a load of stuff. Fight supplies and death blow as well, thank you. Um, but just the opportunities. Yeah. Um, everyone's played their part in making me who I am today and, and the fight I am today. I fought on shows in Nantwich, I fought on Yukao, I fought on Muay Grand Prix. Um, PCT and later on in the year, um, or in the month, should I say. Um, yeah, just everyone that's ever given me an opportunity, yeah. everyone that's ever believed in me. Sandy Holt, my old gym, uh, Sean Fogg and Adam Matvienko. Um, then even them at Elite uh, Thai Boxing and Bolt. Them people, again, I, I won't forget. Yeah. Everyone that's just given me their time their energy, sponsored me, trained with me, got punched in the face by me and punched me back. But I love you all because without you, I can't, I wouldn't have been in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wilson. It was a pleasure talking to you. Always. Thank you for giving me time. Love, So yeah, I look forward to starting, I think we're April, a couple of weeks down the line. So yeah, peace out, man. Thanks. Love, bro. Thank you. All the best.